Hey friends, Dennis Ernst here, your personal phlebotomy guru. Hey, I don't have to tell you that one of the more critical aspects of drawing a blood sample for laboratory testing is also one of the most deadly to the patient, if you don't do it right. Labeling the sample. I know, many of you have been drawing blood since, well, forever. And you've got your routine so memorized that you're convinced you're doing it right every time. But did you know the standards are revised every five to seven years? So has the standards changed since you were taught? Has your facility's procedure manual kept up with the changes? Well, maybe it has, maybe it hasn't, but let's find out and get you the confidence you need to know if you're up to date or labeling according to an outdated protocol. In this video, I'm going to discuss the three steps that today's industry standards say that you must follow when labeling every tube of blood without exception or modification. The standard I'm referring to is this one, GP33A2. Accuracy in Patient and Specimen Identification, published by the Clinical and Laboratory Standards Institute, or CLSI. Now, I chaired the revision and the development of this document, and I can tell you the changes since the original came out are significant. And then I'm going to talk to you about a common trap that a lot of phlebotomists and other healthcare professionals who draw blood samples fall victim to, putting their patients in, in serious jeopardy. And by the time this video is over, it's my overarching goal that you leave with the confidence that your technique for labeling blood samples is exactly what the standards require and that you're not the least bit capable of mislabeling a sample. And I'm also going to share a clip or two from a couple of our full-length applied phlebotomy training videos specifically related to tube labeling. First, some perspective. Did you know that every year in the U.S., 160,000 adverse patient events occur because the patient was either not identified properly or the sample was improperly labeled? And that 11% of all transfusion-related deaths are because the phlebotomist didn't either identify the patient or label the sample correctly? That's why we've got to get this part right. Let me give you a real-life example on why this is so important. There was a case in Michigan where a lab tech went to the OB department to draw blood samples from three patients. When she drew the first patient, she loosely wrapped the labels around the cluster of tubes, bound it with a rubber band, and put them in her pocket. Then she drew the next two patients and wrapped their labels around the cluster of tubes likewise and bound it with a rubber band, put those in her pocket too. Then she came back to the laboratory, spread all the tubes and labels out to label them all, and she was distracted. When she returned, she mislabeled every one of them. All patients required blood bank work. One patient, a 34-year-old wife and mother of four, received incompatible blood and died. That's why you have to know what the standards say and follow it every time. So here's the first requirement that can have no exceptions. Label all tubes at the patient's side. I know it's basic, but I guarantee you will at some point be pressured by people or circumstances that put this to the test. But you cannot waver. Remember, you are the patient's last line of defense against medical mistakes, so make sure not even wild horses can pull you away from the patient before you've labeled the tubes. The second rock-solid requirement is that we label tubes after the draw, not before. The standards are quite clear on this, and for good reason. Having chaired the venipuncture and the sample labeling standards, I can tell you that both committees were adamant that tubes never be labeled before the draw, only after. That's because if they're labeled before the draw and they end up not being filled for whatever reason, oh, a difficult stick, unable to locate the vein, the patient passes out, a short draw, a combative patient, any number of things. And then you've got empty labeled tubes laying around that could potentially be used on someone else should they not be discarded. So label tubes only after they have blood in them. The third standard requirement you must be implementing every time comes after the tubes are labeled, and that is to confirm that they are labeled properly. Hey, some of us carry around the labels of multiple patients in our trays, in our pockets, and in our carts, so just because we identify the patient properly doesn't guarantee that we're putting the right label on the tubes. We can satisfy this requirement in either of two ways. We can compare the labeled tube to the patient's ID bracelet, or we can ask the patient to take a look at the labeled tubes and confirm that they're labeled properly. If the patient is unconscious, sedated, or cognitively impaired, or has a language barrier, then we must ask the same person who identified them prior to the draw to confirm the tubes were labeled correctly.
Let's take a look at a brief clip about sample labeling from our video, Basic Venipuncture. All tubes must be labeled after the draw and in the presence of the patient. The information must include the date, time, and identity of the collector. The labeled tubes must then be confirmed by either comparing them with the patient's ID bracelet or asking the patient to verify they are labeled properly. Never leave an inpatient or emergency room patient or release an outpatient from your care until all samples have been completely and permanently labeled and confirmed to have been labeled correctly. So there you go. That's what the standards say. Now before we talk about that trap that a lot of healthcare professionals fall into when it comes to labeling samples, let me just remind you that the industry standards are published by the Clinical and Laboratory Standards Institute, CLSI, and are available on their website, clsi.org, and for about the same price on our site, phlebotomy.com. Again, you're looking for document GP33, Accuracy in Patient and Specimen Identification. Now let's talk about that trap I mentioned earlier that some who draw blood fall victim to putting their patients in great peril. That trap is when you're asked to label blood samples you didn't draw. Maybe you work in a lab and someone walks in a bag like this and it contains tubes and labels that aren't attached. Or maybe there are unlabeled tubes in a bag and the bag is labeled. Or maybe you're a nurse or an emergency department tech who was handled unlabeled tubes and labels separately and told to label them. Either way, there's only one thing you can do with them. Throw them away. We have to throw them away. They have to be recollected and properly labeled at the patient's side. Making an exception is taking a huge risk with the patient's life. You've simply got to be that patient's last line of defense and be that advocate in your facility for proper specimen labeling. We have to consider a tube and a label in the presence of the patients to be like a bride and a groom at the altar. If they leave the altar without being united as one, they can no longer be considered to belong to each other. So unless you witness the proper identification of that patient and are willing to accept full responsibility for anything that might happen, discard the sample. In fact, nobody should even get the opportunity to label them after the fact. Hey, there's consequences for not following protocol and it shouldn't be the patient who pays them. Inconveniencing the person who sent you unlabeled samples is how we prevent potentially catastrophic medical mistakes in the future. And that's how we change behaviors that invite them. All right, now before I summarize what we've talked about, make sure you go right down there and you click subscribe. You wanna come back to this channel because I'm putting out some good stuff and you deserve it. So let's summarize. Here's what you've learned so far. Always label tubes in the presence of the patient. Label all tubes after they're filled, not before. Confirm all tubes are labeled properly by comparing them to the patient's ID band or get verbal confirmation. And never label tubes you didn't draw unless you witness the collection procedure, including proper patient identification. So I'm hoping that this has helped you assess your current practice and given you the confidence in knowing that your technique squares with the standard. If you've learned that you need to modify your practices to reflect the standard, well, that's even better. Feel free to share this video on social media and where you work. If you want to learn more about properly identifying your patients in the first place, then click on this video link at the end of our visit. Remember, you're the patient's last line of defense against medical mistakes, and they're counting on you not to make exceptions with their blood samples. That's today's tip from your personal phlebotomy guru. I'm Dennis Ernst, reminding you to keep sticking to the standards.